Okej, okay, tack så mycket Valensas. Det är Johan Holmqvist här på AIC. Jag jobbar som regionchef på AIC då och det är lite noise här i bakgrunden. Det beror på att vi är på fastighetsmässan i Göteborg här då. Men vi jobbar på AIC som BIM-konsulter i Sverige. Vi finns på fyra orter. Det är i Stockholm, Göteborg, Växjö och Uppsala numera. Vi är återförsäljare av Autodesk och Aga Kalls produktserie i Sverige då. Och det är Valensa Alcivius idag från Aga Kalls som kommer att hålla det här webbinariet som handlar om pelare och balkar i vänligt då. Som blir betydligt mycket enklare att hantera med de här produkterna på Aga Kalls som vi kommer att visa idag då. Ja, är det några frågor efter webbinariet så får ni jättegärna kontakta mig då som är liksom kontakt kring just AIK-biten på AIC. Jag finns på 07-8-51-16-83 och på johl.aic.se. Ja, nej det var väl inte mycket mer än så egentligen så att Valensas, you can take over. Okej. Okay. Um... So in this slide, you should see uh, the, all of our products. So uh, you have different products here for the framing, for the handling of information in the project, some other uh, add-ons for Revit. But today we'll talk about precast concrete. Um, so uh, precast concrete may, might be used for uh, work with precast elements to insert details, to sort elements, to create drawings. And uh, inside of a precast concrete, we have five tools. So one is for the floor, uh, prefab uh, floor elements, slabs to create, to lay, make the layout, then split walls into the panels, uh, insert different kind of details, voice cuts, and so on. Uh, automatically number elements and then create drawings with smart assemblies at the end. So I will show this live now. These are the client stores. If you are interested in the um, in the in the success stories of our clients, you can read them on our website. Uh, in this webinar, you will see how to work with beams and columns only. Uh, we made a series of webinars before uh, about the walls and slabs and then today we'll talk about only beams and columns so it should it should not be long uh, i will show just a couple of examples how does it work uh, in general and you can download trials and then try to use this software uh, on your projects on your precast elements so now i switch over to revit you should see my uh some columns and framing elements here. Um, and uh, on the right side, you see tools for BIMDOC. This is our uh, solution just to install of our and manage all of our solutions. So you download it from our web page and install any solutions you would like to try. So in Precast Concrete, as I said, there are five solutions. Um, Floor panel layouts, smart details, smart walls, sort mark, and smart assemblies. Um, so today I will not use floor panel layout and smart walls, as this is not related to the topic. But uh, <clears throat> instead, I will use smart details. Then I will sort elements and create some drawings. So um, all of our solutions, they uh, are talked in, in this one, or you can click on this and, and then drag the solution and commands over here. And also, maybe I'll mention that uh, you can get some help if you click on that button and, and, and you'll get to some webinars and help and uh, sample projects. But okay, let's uh, start some action. So Smart Details is a solution to insert details uh, to your elements. So to use smart details, you need to prepare configurations. If I will open configuration window, um, let's see how does it look. And I'll just make some notes about it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, this is the configuration window for smart details. Smart details could be used with these categories of elements. Today, we will talk about framing elements. So let's say I will switch to this one. And here in these tabs, you define how to place line-based or point-based details. Uh, let's say in this example, you see uh, I choose to insert, let's say I want to insert some detail on the top face of my uh, structural framing element. So I choose the detail which I want to uh, place. So I can do that from the list or I can use family browser and, and find my details from here. So I select the detail and I define that I want to insert it on top or bottom or on both faces of the uh, structural framing element. And then here I define the uh, distribution. How do I want to place them in one direction, the layout axis direction. So in this case, I just want to place two details uh, with some end of sets, right? from start and the end. So I will have placed just two details here. Um, and in other direction, as you see in the picture, I can distribute them in other direction also. I want to place it just in the center of the face of a structural framing element. Um, over here, again, another uh, family in, in next tab will be placed also on the top and just in the center of my uh, top face. So I can insert as many details as I want. It could be point-based details. It could be line-based details. Um, let's say maybe over here, I can show some examples, let's say, of more options. Um, like it could look like this, right? I can have as many details as I want in each of the tabs. So it depends on my what do I need? Um, okay, so let's see how does it work. Uh, I select the element if I have configuration, so I can click on insert details and select the configuration which I want to use. So this one, I want to use this configuration and I will click on insert details. So now it will place uh, the details which I defined in this configuration. So let's say this is just a face-based family uh, <clears throat> inserted in the desired location, then some face-based family at the bottom face of a column, and so on. Um, so there might be uh, different situations. Um, so I will just show you a couple of other examples. So what I can do, I can select elements and click on insert details and then um, select configuration from a list and apply this configuration on these selected elements. So you'll see if these are quite the same, uh, almost the same actually, but I'll get back to this to, to talk about it uh, in more details, but let's just see a couple of more examples. Uh, other way to insert details is um, we have smart detail configuration parameter in the element. So we can just place the name of configuration here. And after I click on auto insert, it will read the name of configuration and will just place the details, right? So let's say in this case, I have used different configurations. I just placed different core bills. I placed this kind of detail with maybe additional uh, plate over here, so I have a column which goes from uh, just from from foundation level to the top level. So it might be different situations, right? Maybe I will just do it like this, uh, that I will just select uh, these all the maybe even um, yeah. Okay, the columns, and I will just click on auto insert because I have the names of configurations here. So maybe I'll just show you other examples. Um, yeah, okay, this one just uses um, different kind of connections here, right? Um, let me show you maybe the same thing with uh, structural beam elements. 
I'll do the same auto insert. So now, okay, these doesn't have somehow configuration name, maybe. Core bell, not the one I want. Maybe I need to just pick from the list. This time, still core bell. This one should be. Okay, yeah, so in this case, you see different kind of details, again, placed at the uh, start and end faces of the beam. Then I have placed some details, just if I will select the detail and go to configuration, you'll see this detail was placed just by gravity point, by using two points and then fixing spacing, fixed spacing. So I can do that in many different ways. Let's say over here I have some corbel which is uh, synced into the uh, into this beam. Then this beam uh, it has some cuts like to fit on the corbel. Then different kind of cuts here. Um, then again, um, yeah, another one here is just to have plates at the ends. So there are different many situations, right? But I want to get back again to uh, what other features are of, of this solution is that it can uh, recognize the connection between elements. Let's say you see I have two structural framing elements here and these go just in one direction. This is corner uh, beams and over here I have three of them. So I have three core bells automatically inserted and how I can do that in the smart details is that I can define that this detail will be inserted only if I will, uh, I'm searching horizontally. And if I find the structural framing element, L connection between column and the beam. So this detail will be on, only inserted if I have this kind of uh, connection with structural framing element. So <clears throat> If I don't have it, I don't have the details on the other faces of the column, right? So this is one of the options. Let's say um, over here, I have detail with uh, bars going up and down. And here I have the detail which ha doesn't have uh, bars which, which goes to the top. So again, uh, in configurations, I made it like this. If L connection uh, is between the column and the beam, then I insert uh, this detail. And if I have T connection, so then, then my beam just goes in the middle of a column. So I insert different detail. So uh, it can recognize different kind of connections between elements, right? Another feature is that uh, I placed this detail just at the intersection with, of the column and the beam. But you see it's uh, the detail fits to the bottom of my beam. If I will, <clears throat> uh, let's say, increase the size of my beam, I can do the update of the details. I will do the update of the details. And you will see that uh, my corbel is automatically moved uh, just based on the size of my beam. And how can I do that is that inside of the family, I must name parameters in some certain way. You see that the, this is insertion point over here and the distance of my corbel is controlled by this parameter. So if I name this parameter uh, under certain rules, like I did, I created this parameter. If I'll modify it, you will see that I have two hash symbols in front of it, and then the name of uh, parameter from the beam. So this is the beam H uh, parameter. And um, if I use double hash symbols in front, then I make it as an instance parameter and I group it under construction. Then during the insert, um, smart details will read H parameter from this beam, you see? We have H parameter in this beam. It will read this parameter and it will change this, uh, the name of, not the name, but the value of this parameter 
inside my family. So it can automatically adjust to the changes of the beam. And I can use this in, in, in many different ways. Okay, I don't see that this beam has any... Um, okay. I'll play some details here also. So you will see that, <clears throat> let's say this void, uh, it cuts through the full height of the beam, but it, it also has this H parameter. It's just the difference that uh, it has one hash symbol and it's under model properties. So it's just um, a feature how you can you know, take information from your elements and make quick adoption to the changes, uh, do the update, do the modify things which you need overall when you are working in your projects. Okay, maybe. Um, so this is kind of important features of smart details, but let's move over and um, switch over to a sort mark. And sort mark is a solution to automatically number your elements. If I will go to the plan view, um, <clears throat> we will see that my columns, they don't have any mark parameter here. This is empty. So what can I do is to use sort mark. Um, I can do that for selected elements or just for the whole category. So I will click on element numbering. From this uh, one, I will select structural columns. I'll click on OK, and then I need to select where do I want to write my information. So this time I want to write information into the mark parameter, so I'll click on OK. And here I can prepare configurations. How do I want to number my uh, columns? So do I want to group them somehow? Uh, maybe I will just give it a new name. Um, demo columns. So I can use it in, in other projects also. Uh, so I will not use any gr grouping, but I will use n some numbering, uh, some parameters for the numbering. Let's say if I will add uh, that uh, any of the parameters could be added, let's say instance or type parameters. If I will add instance volume parameter, so my columns, they all of them, they will have different mark only if uh, if they have different volume, right? So I can also add some other uh, parameters, uh, materials or whatever. Then subnumbering, additional number could be added also. Uh, sorting, how to sort it. So I can sort it by, let's say, level, name, or... Um, <clears throat> any other parameters or also by element position. Um, then in the end, uh, at the sort mark, I need to add well, what kind of information I want to write to this parameter. So maybe I want to write volume information to the mark parameter if I want to write, or just the calculated value. Okay, maybe I'll just remove volume information. So I will add only calculated value so I will start from one prefix. Maybe I want to add some prefix here. Um, and I will click on OK. So now all of my structural columns are automatically numbered. So some of them, of course, will have uh, duplicate mark values because uh, they, are, they have the same uh, volume and the same length, probably. So uh, <clears throat> I will have something same, but if I want to, let's say I can select only the elements which I want. Let's say structural columns again. I will filter them, but this time I will go to the mark again. But this time I would like to uh, just add some different name and I will use numbering, let's say ID. So all of my columns will have different mark then I will sort them based on the X uh, coordinate. And I will add only number, okay, just a prefix, um, I don't know, um, just change it a little bit and click on okay. 
So you see now they are numbering in this direction. So because my x direction is in, in that uh, in that direction, so in global coordinates. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I can get some kind of um, <coughs> numbering, right, which I want. So I can do the same with other elements like beams, um, walls, or whatever I have in my project. So maybe I'll do that for the beams, actually. Let's uh, use structural framing elements and element numbering, and I'll do that for the mark. Because I need mark values to create assemblies, um, OK, I'll just create maybe a new one. Numbering, again, instance ID. And I will just use the number and PIM. OK. <clears throat> OK, so now that I'm done with the numbers, I have all the mark values for all of my elements. You see, it's a B14 and so on. Uh, I will switch over to smart assemblies, and now I will create some drawings. So let's see what can we create, actually. So I will select, let's say, I don't know, some kind of uh, element, maybe column, and uh, go ahead and click on Create Assemblies. And I'll select one of my configurations, uh, this one. So, OK. So now what it will do, it will play, it will take main element, then all the hosted elements automatically add to assembly and create the views, the drawings. So let me see. Uh, this is the name of configuration. is the same as the mark of my column. So it's a PC9. And what's the result? So the result is like this. So um, I defined in configurations that I want to create a front view. I want to place some dimensions for the hosted details, for the overall dimensions. Uh, I want to place some schedules. I want to place some legends. Uh, 3D view in this case, but that depends on configurations, right? So let's take a look what's inside these configurations. So smart assemblies, it also has configurations like uh, what should be created, right? So if I will take a look to the configuration which I have used, you see that now I have uh, defined the views, the legends which I want to create. Uh, I can also rotate these views automatically. I can uh, dis assign view template, uh, view type, uh, then the name of the view, the view template, what should be dimension rule. Uh, dimension rule uh, defines how to dimension main element, how to dimension cuts, openings in the main element, how to dimension hosted details, metal details, how they should be dimensioned. We can also use model lines inside the inside the metal details so we can get exact position of the uh, dimension where should it snap then concrete details uh, also could be dimensioned rebars how we want to place notes above the dimensions right if i want to dimension openings uh, what should be the parameter displayed type parameter displayed then how the nodes should be placed and so on. So we prepare dimension rule, we save it under different names, we can use it in different projects, and then assign this dimension rule to the selected view. Uh, some tags, options, uh, some to insert gravity point, some additional options to reverse views, rotate views, and so on over here. Uh, we can also create uh, assembly view or model view. In the, in the place of our assembly. So there are two types of views. Then schedules, we just select what and how many of schedules do we want to create, what uh, schedule template should be applied, and it will be created, and the sheet. So the sheet also could be created. Let's say if I select the, the column, I create the views, I can select this sheet to be as a template, and you see that 
in the in the this result i didn't need to to drag my views on the template so again the configurations how uh, this should be created uh, how should it look may be very different let's say if i'll pick this column and it has some okay this column it, it also have some surface mark in, inside the family so you can use that also so i'll just create an assembly of this one uh, so just to show you let's say how could it be so i can select one column or two columns it doesn't matter it will create two assemblies if i will create <coughs> if i select two columns so it's a bit different than revit itself Okay, so the views are created, the dimensions are placed, and then the views are placed on the sheet, just based on the sheet template. How do you want to place them? Okay, so let's take a look now to this one. Um, so this is C3. If I will go to this one, you will see that in this case, I get the horizontal view because I just in, in configurations, I define that I want to rotate this view automatically. Uh, so I have a surface mark. So this view is just selected view, right? So it displays the, uh, the view from, from the top of this column, at least in the formwork, it should look like this. Uh, some schedules here and some sections in the def defined position, right? I can also move these sections, define how do I want to have it Maybe I want to have a section in this position, just <clears throat> uh, modify them to the positions I want, and then I can leave it as it is. Uh, yeah, I should actually remove that, and then I can update and uh, fix the dimensions if needed. So if I'll update, it will modify the changes of the section place and so on. So I will get the final result of my column. So <clears throat> maybe I'll just run through a couple of examples how it could be, how could it look. And you can compare this to your workflow, to your current workflow. So we will see that smart assemblies, it has like modify, update functionality, disassemble functionality, change configurations and so on. So uh, there are many options how to, how to modify your uh, assemblies, how to update them if uh, you have some changes. So it's quite, uh, you can follow your project workflow. Okay, um, do I have, so mm -hmm, it's a couple of assemblies in here. Um, so how do I get the uh, sheet templates? How do I get this kind of view automatically, uh, this kind of sheet automatically, the views are placed in, in some kind of locations, right? So how do I make it? I have the template project. Let me switch over to the template project. Ah, this is my family of a column, so I'll close down this one. So this is my uh, template project where I have my assemblies created. And then maybe I'll show you just like this, that this sheet was created the previous configuration. I placed the views the way I want. Uh, you can make your own decisions. Maybe it should be like this, maybe it should be like that. And then you will create assemblies in other in other project. It will place views just like this, like it is in this template project in this sheet. So when you prepare these configurations, uh, it will place automatically everything on the sheet. So maybe I will just show you a couple of examples let's say the beam example right so i have some uh, cuts here so i have some uh, dimensioning for them uh, i have dimension for the details i have dimension for the gravity point total dimensions so there are many options here 
okay some cut over here so this one is automatic so i don't need to do anything here for this drawing so okay let's see over here maybe some other examples of a column of a, a wall of a wall with a, <coughs> with a reinforcement let's say over here so we can create as many sheets as we want uh, whatever we want and the layout of the drawings as you see is very different it just depends on you how do you want to do that right staircase maybe something else uh, sandwich wall uh, double t slab right so okay so these are a couple of examples the possibilities of smart assemblies i don't want to go very deep into that but um so i just make uh, a pause here because um i have i see that uh, there's a question here and the question is about if you can apply the same configuration for different sizes of a column so actually you can apply but um, it will not fit automatically right uh, it's better when it's the same size because of the sheet size um, and so on so probably it's just a better workflow to, to do that uh, we uh, if I'll go to shop drawing configurations uh, and dimension rules uh, we have this tab over here but uh, we we can't uh, make a split the crop region and then you know just shrink let's say if the beam is too long for the sheet we cannot shrink it because actually it's not allowed in Revit AP for so <clears throat> for us as developers it's not allowed yet because Autodesk is, we just didn't do that yet. So, but hopefully in the future it will be possible. I don't know. Um, do we have more questions? Um, I think that's it. So, um, probably that's what I wanted to show you just to quick uh, information how to use it uh, the possibilities and it's up to you now you can take the trial and uh, contact us if you need some help uh, yeah free trial just um, download these tools for BIMDoc for your version of uh, um, of your Revit then you can uh, contact us also uh, AEC for the support information uh, contact me if uh, necessary if you have some questions and so on so thank you for your attention and let's keep in touch through the emails and so on uh, have a good day and bye bye